So my name is Wendy Collins and I work for a company called InfoBase Learning and we work in the education space with a lot of different types of media. Video is just one of those. Uh, but in order to deliver video to our customers, we've created a platform that's built on top of Kaltura and integrated with 3Play, obviously. Uh, it's called Films on Demand. Any Films on Demand customers out there? Anybody using our platform to deliver educational videos? Okay, so come talk to me later. Um, but we've been around for about eight years, uh, nine years actually. I'm proud to say that we launched the Films on Demand platform one month after YouTube. So we missed it by a month to say that we beat YouTube to the streaming video uh, space race. But um, we're very proud of how our platform has evolved. Certainly YouTube has gone on an uh, unmistakable trajectory, but our platform is pretty impressive in its own right. We currently have about 20,000 full-length videos that we serve up uh, across all of our different content areas. And we break them down into segments to make them very usable in different learning management systems or different environments. So we've got about 350,000 uh, video bytes, if you will, that range from two minutes up to about five minutes. And they're pretty amazing nuggets in and of themselves. Um, we represent about 850 different producers on our platform, and I'll, I'll show you some examples in a second. Uh, we span across 40 different subject areas, which makes it probably the most comprehensive video platform in higher ed education. Uh, we've currently, we've surpassed 100 million views uh, over the last few years, and we're working with about 2,000 schools and about 13 million different users. So that's just some of the interesting statistics. Here is a quick snapshot of our content library. Uh, these are the 40 top level subjects that we offer. As you can see, it's all across the board. Uh, we have a tremendous amount in some of the larger uh, subject areas like psychology, health, English, business, and then we've got uh, a lot of other smaller repositories in the different subject areas that you see there. So it's pretty comprehensive. Uh, here's a snapshot of some of the key producers that we represent, some of the big names like the BBC, NBC News, PBS, uh, TED Talks, the History Channel, uh, on and on. Like I said, we've got over 850 producers and this is just a snapshot of some of the marquee ones that we represent. In terms of the video platform, we break it down into really five different key areas that we work on. Um, the first is playback in the first column here. Uh, and these are the things that make uh, users want to watch the video. We've got the, the player features that make it easy, uh, like dynamic bitrate switching, HD quality. We're really mobile optimized at this point, And we provide different viewing experiences for widescreen versus the 4x3 technology. And all of these things that I'm talking about here are all built, like I said, on top of the Kaltura uh, engine. So we, we look at integration and how we can take those video segments that I talked about and allow our users to plug them into their different systems that they use. And you can see some of the systems and the way that we do that there. Uh, in terms of the third column, tools, these are all the functionality that we've wrapped around our videos to make it easy to use in the different systems and for our different users. Uh, the, the two I wanted to talk mostly about are the last two columns. We put a lot of emphasis on search and how we can help our users find and use the content that they need, and obviously accessibility, which is why we're here today. Uh, in the search area, we've done everything from basic search all the way down to building out an XML gateway that allows different third-party systems to integrate with our content to pull it up into a federated search engine, for example, or different discovery tools that are out there. Uh, on the accessibility side, uh, we define accessibility two different ways. We define accessibility in terms of making sure that our content is viewable anywhere, anytime, on any platform. And we also define accessibility in terms of making sure that everybody can understand and comprehend it with the, the captions and the transcripts. So um, I just wanted to give you a little bit of context about the platform as a whole. And then I wanted to kind of switch gears and talk about the transcripts and the captioning piece of it. Uh, this is a screen you saw in an early version uh, that CJ showed you as well, but every video in our platform has a screen that looks like this. Obviously the video playback is very prominent, uh, but so is the option for the closed captioning and the interactive transcripts on the side. And we're pretty proud of the fact that our transcripts get a lot of use, uh, a lot of traction, a lot of visibility within our platform. In terms of sort of the backstory for how we uh, started this process and where we are today, uh, back in 2001, uh, I think many of you in the room probably remember VHS. Uh, it was still the primary format, and we were captioning only about 30% 
of our content at the time in terms of the VHS format. And the typical turnaround time for that was six months. So we'd actually ship the VHS tapes literally across the country, get a master back and be able to service our customers with that six months later. Uh, we would spend about $500 a title, uh, and we would only do about uh, 100 of our 600 new titles every year uh, would, would have captioning because it was so cost prohibitive. In 2006, the, for, the first format change came with DVD, and we started to recognize the value of having our content captioned, uh, especially in the education space. So we bumped it up to about 50% of our entire library. We made that investment. Uh, we got the turn time down to about four months, I think mostly because we then started FedExing our content uh, instead of slow shipping it. So we were still physically shipping uh, masters across the country. Um, the price point stayed about the same and we increased just a little bit what we were able to do every year uh, because it was still pretty cost prohibitive. In 2009, uh, the streaming world uh, changed a lot of things. We were still doing DVDs, but it was starting to turn into the streaming world. Um, we started captioning about 65% of our content, so the, the universe was growing. Uh, we got our turnaround time down to about two to three months, our costs down to about $400 a title but we were still only captioning a portion of our library. So we kept digging a bigger and bigger hole for ourselves uh, as we went forward. Fast forward to 2012, uh, where we started working with Kaltura and 3Play and the streaming realm. And now our library stands at about 98% fully captions and transcripts. Uh, the final 2% is really things that aren't easily transcribed, uh, silent movies kind of hard to do. Uh, so we, we leave a little room there for not being able to say we're 100%. Um, we've got our turnaround time to about two to three days. We could do it faster. I should say 3Play could do it faster, but we kind of meter that on our end to kind of keep the flow of content coming into our system. Uh, you can see our average cost per title, and we're now going 100% all in with our new content coming into the system. Uh, we've upped our ingest process, so we're doing about 5,000 new titles a year, and they're all at that 98% mark in terms of being captioned. So it's a pretty good story on our front to be able to tell how we've moved into that realm. What is also a pretty good story is how we've started to evolve, as I said at the beginning, our concept of the value of captioning and the value of these transcriptions. So like everybody else, we sort of started off in what we call phase one. We were just thinking about captions and transcripts and the value from the ADA compliance level. Um, we immediately got an initial benefit out of the printing element. This is something that we didn't really think would get a lot of use. And it turned out that uh, the first year that we rolled out captionings in our online system, people just want to print stuff. It's amazing. You know, we live in an online world, but we're still paper-based in a lot of ways. So uh, whether for research purposes or educational uh, takeaways, we were seeing a tremendous amount of printability of the transcripts, which was kind of a surprise to us. But it sort of came along for the ride when we introduced the captions. And then we sort of went down this next path with search enhancements. And this is something that we had in the back of our minds when we started with the captioning uh, online, and it's definitely proven to be worth uh, our investment in that area. We've seen three different ways that searchability has really come into play with our transcripts. Uh, the first one there is to just be able to search within a video. So if you look back on the screenshot or you've seen some of the presentations today, you can simply now search all the words, all the text within any video in the collection. High usage again. The second searchability aspect comes with the, the option to be able to search across all of your videos. So we've got 20,000 videos, and we've created these segments to try to help our users be able to find what they're looking for. But it's still not as good as being able to search every word of every video in the 20,000. So we've really seen a, a big benefit to our users to be able to search across all of our content. The third relates to SEO in a different way. We think of SEO not in terms of how can we get noticed on Google, uh, because we're not a public site, we are a subscription service, but we've really leveraged the transcripts and the captioning to improve our internal SEO, to help the right videos rise to the top in our search engine, which we were unable to do when we were just basing it on our metadata, which was a title and a three-word description for a 60-minute video. It just wasn't weighted correctly. Now we can really weight the relevancy and improve the, uh, the SEO within our own site. So we've started down what we're calling phase three, which is really the, 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 not the final frontier, but maybe the next frontier in terms of our platform. We've taken the transcripts and we've said, what else can we do with them? The, the first thing that we started to do, or we, we are doing, is we are converting them in our system 
on the fly to over 50 languages in our platform using Google Transcript, uh, which is a Google Translate, which is a free plugin. I'm sure everybody knows that, so we're not reinventing the wheel here. But what we've done is we've connected it up to the transcripts. Uh, and so real time, you are watching a video and the transcript is playing alongside of it in French or Spanish or Portuguese. And the user doesn't have to do anything other than click a button. So it's pretty powerful and it does everything that the regular transcript does. You can click on a word, you can search, you can do all that, you can print, but it now has the ability to service a whole different population of ESL users uh, or foreign students. The next one we've done is to take our uh, transcripts and use them as the foundation for allowing our users to create their own clips. So we let our users, if they don't like how we've segmented the video into little chunks, they can now make their own. And the, the way that they identify the in and the out points is to actually use the transcripts. So we've tied that into a functionality that lets our uh, educators who are using our system hone in on the two minutes, the 30 seconds, the 10 seconds, whatever it is that they want to have to plug into their learning management system, they can now specify those in and out points and the transcripts really allow them to hone in on just the pieces that they want. Uh, the, the last piece here is something that we're working on currently. Um, we have for eight years now, we've been indexing our content manually. So this is a story I think that uh, many content providers uh, can sympathize with. Uh, Indexing is very um, time intensive, very manual to do to get it right. And we have been now experimenting using the transcript content to be able to auto-generate tags or indexes into our system. So we hope to be able to uh, supplement, if not replace, how we're currently doing our indexing using the transcripts, running them through um, one of several different programs that we're exper experimenting with to be able to output either semantic, both semantic and real text tags and uh, have that be a part of our world of how we're helping our users to find our content. So we're not indexing or taxonomizing our content but extracting those tags from the transcripts. So all of this would not be possible if we didn't start with the first two there. And I think that's the story that uh, I wanted to try to tell that it's, you have to kind of think about the value. Uh, Matt talked about the cost. It is an investment to do transcripts and captioning whether you're a university or you're a publisher servicing a university, it's an investment. But if you start to think about everything that becomes possible after you make that investment, uh, it's, it's pretty powerful.